Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in charge of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operation operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from, from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the Longevity products or the Longevity business, 844-236-6010 is your number. Formulations, ingredients, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, we can help you. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is our number. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, you can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, start a business for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business and earn thank you checks help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. And of course, you can also get your products at the wholesale price. If you so desire, call the Brightside Ben phone team for more information at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And I would also like to suggest remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, acne blemishes, accelerated aging of the skin, wrinkles, you want to know about our Truth Retinol 5% gel made with retinol as well as vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, water, wax, filler, oil, silicon, propylene, glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% gel. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, and we're running a special till the end of April on our Truth Serum, you can get a trial size for just $29, and the trial size will last you probably four or five weeks. That's one of the neat things about our truth treatment products is they last a really long time because everything in the product is active material, active and functional material, which means you only use one or two drops per dose or a tiny pinhead size amount per dose. Some folks have been telling me that their retinol product is lasting them almost a year. That's unheard of in the world of skin health, in the world of skin care, and that's because the products are only made with active and functional ingredients, no water or silicon, wax, emulsifiers, or anything else your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so I want to finish up talking about shea butter, which I absolutely love as a topical ingredient. You can actually, in Africa, they actually fry food with shea butter, but it's a it's an awesome topical ingredient. I don't know about eating the stuff, but it is just an incredible topical, topical ingredient. I've got a few more things I want to say about that. But before we get to that, I want to briefly touch on something we talked about at the end of the program yesterday, and it's something I think is pretty important. It's called the basal thermometer test for hypothyroidism. Got a call at the end of the program yesterday about hypothyroidism. And uh, 
if you've been, if you suspect that you're hypothyroid, you're probably going to go uh, to the doctor and get a TSH test done or a T4 test done. I'm, you know, if you listen to this program, I'm not a big believer in diagnostic testing because of their dependence on reference values. Reference values are statistical metrics that doctors use to determine what kind of diagnosis they're going to make or what kind of protocol they're going to suggest, especially drug protocol. So you'll go get a thyroid test, your TSH test, and, or your T4 test, and then depending on the numbers, you're either going to get cleared, uh, you don't have hypothyroidism, your thyroid's fine, or you'll get dosed with some kind of thyroid hormone medication. Same thing occurs if you want to go get your cholesterol tested. They'll test your cholesterol levels, and then they'll determine whether you've got high cholesterol, low cholesterol, whatever your cholesterol status is, and they'll give you a statin drug for it, or not, depending on what the numbers say. Same with blood sugar and, and diabetes. Problem with these things, these, these, uh, uh, these diagnostic tests, which pretty much all medical professionals depend on, the pro especially, by the way, functional medicine, functional practitioners, uh, practitioners of functional medicine posture themselves as being more patient-friendly because they supposedly address causes of disease. But the problem with these kinds of tests, whether they're performed by a functional medicine professional or a regular doctor, is they are dependent on what are called the reference ranges. They make their determinations on your diagnosis and on your protocols based on reference values, normal or high or low. Oh, you're normal. Oh, you're high. Oh, you're low. How do they know you're normal or high or low? Because they go by these testing reference ranges, which are just statistical mumbo jumbo. And while they may work for statistics, they don't work for individuals. Individuals are not statistics. Statistics only work for mass numbers of people. They don't work for individuals. So just because you're high or low on a test compared to a normal range doesn't mean that you're high or low for you. High or low for you can only be assessed by your symptoms, not by your test scores. Individuals are not statistics, and to judge how healthy someone is based on statistical values of normality is not accurate, and it's unfair, and it's lazy. It's lazy medicine. The best way to assess health is by assessing symptomology and putting together a picture of what's happening in the body. This is what doctors should be doing, not depending on a test score going by your symptoms and then putting together a picture, collecting the knots and then connecting the dots. And you put together, you, you collect all the symptomatic dots, you put together a picture, you see what's happening in the body. If you understand biochemistry, you understand biology, you understand how the body works, it's not, a, it's not difficult to do. We do this on this program every day. If you're tired all the time, if your skin is dry, if your extremities are cold, it doesn't matter what your test scores say, you're probably hypothyroid. And if you're dealing with a chronic long-term disease, a, a chronic degenerative disease, you're almost guaranteed to be hypothyroid. The thyroid is the jumping off point to all chronic long-term degenerative diseases. And if you're dealing with arthritis or autoimmune diseases or, or God forbid cancer or heart disease or whatever long-term health challenge that isn't getting better, you're almost 100% guaranteed to be hypothyroid. So yesterday at the end of the program, we talked about something called the basal thermometer test. The basal thermometer test for hypothyroidism. And I think this is an important subject, so I just want to talk about it for a little bit before we finish up with shea butter and then move on to another interesting source of phytonutrients with notable health benefits. So the basal thermometer test was developed back in the 1940s, I believe, by a guy named Broda Barnes, Dr. Broda Barnes. It's sometimes called the Barnes thermometer test or the Barnes basal thermometer test. Dr. Broda Barnes was one of the first physicians to recognize the absolute unbelievably, unbelievable relevance of thyroid health when it comes to overall wellness. He wrote the classic book, on hypothyroidism, which is called Hypothyroidism, the Unsuspected Illness. He wrote it in the 1970s. And he was of the opinion, as am I, that numerous health issues, including heart disease and cancer and depression and diabetes and ear infections and PMS and other female health issues, as well as skin disorders, are all caused by a poorly functioning thyroid. Now, Barnes did not attribute the cause of the, uh, of the poorly functioning thyroid to the blood sugar system and the, and the uh, adrenal system and the digestive system, as I do. Nonetheless, he was very prescient. He was very advanced for his time because he recognized that the thyroid is the jumping off point to all of these chronic health challenges. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. On the right side. 
Inside. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. If you miss a program, you can review them via search engine. And we have six years plus of great health information on the Bright Side at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. You can also purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com. Also, pharmacistben.com, excuse me. And uh, also, uh, criticalhealthnews.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website for a one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also call the phone team at 866 735 2470. That's 866 735 2470. Okay, so if you are dealing with a thyroid issue or if you're dealing with dry skin, cold extremities, if you have a chronic health issue, if you suspect hypothyroidism, don't waste your time with a TSH test or a T4 test. You can, you can assess the, the, um, the health of your thyroid at home with a thermometer. It's called the basal thermometer test or the Barnes basal thermometer test. It was developed by Dr. Broda Barnes back in the 1940s. Very simple to do. Barnes was one of the one of the more advanced physicians. He recognized uh, in the 1970s anyway. He recognized the actually from the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. He recognized the importance of the thyroid when it comes to the, when it came to the health of the body or the lack thereof. Before way before other doctors do, did he uh, according to Dr. Barnes he said 40 percent of Americans suffer from hypothyroidism. He was saying this in the 1970s. Now he was. 100% correct because he didn't really attribute the hypothyroidism to problems with the digestive tract and the blood sugar system and the adrenal glands as we do. Hypothyroidism is indeed a big problem, but it is not, it doesn't just happen randomly. It is uh, the end result of deficiencies or breakdowns in what I call the triangle of disease. Yes, it's the jumping off point to disease states, but it itself is caused by Point A on the triangle of disease is di the digestive system in Hashimoto's thyroiditis and uh, many instances, in fact, most instances of hypothyroidism involve some degree of autoimmunity. Hashimoto's is the most common cause of hypothyroidism. And as you know, if you've listened to this program, that autoimmune diseases are first and foremost digestive health problems. Blood sugar issues and also the adrenal glands are involved in hypothyroidism. Nonetheless, Barnes was very advanced and he recognized that you could take, you could assess the health of your thyroid simply by taking your temperature. What you do is first thing in the morning, it has to be first thing in the morning, in fact, it has to be before you get out of bed. You just take a thermometer and take your temperature under your armpit or put the thermometer in your mouth for 10 minutes. But you don't want to move around. You got to do it right when you're in bed. So keep the thermometer right by your bed stand, right, right by your nightstand. If you're a woman and you're on your period, don't do the test. According to Barnes, you could do the test on your second or third day of your period. I say just don't do it during your period. Wait till you're done with your period and do your test because periods can change the way your, uh, your, your body temperature. So you want to take your, uh, just take your temperature before you get up, before you start moving around, just while you're laying in bed, you do it for three days and you take an average of those three days. If you're uh, below normal body temperature, uh, 97.8 degrees, this can be indicative of hypothyroidism, according to Dr. Barnes, especially if you have other symptoms. If you're dealing with cold extremities or dry skin or uh, you have a chronic health challenge or uh, if, if you have uh, cardiovascular health issues or PMS or female health issues and you are uh, hypothyroid via the Barnes test, if your body temperature is below 97.8 degrees, rest assured you're hypothyroid or there's a good chance that you're hypothyroid. And by the way, if it's the other way around, if you uh, have a reading over 97.8 degrees and you have sweaty palms and oily skin and oily hair and you're jittery and have anxiety, that could indicate hyperthyroidism. And by the way, unless you have an iodine deficiency, which do occur, and iodine is extremely important as an essential nutrient, but unless you have a full-blown iodine deficiency, you're not going to heal your thyroid or prevent hypothyroidism simply by taking iodine. Now, I'm not saying iodine is not important. It's very important. But the idea that you can take iodine and cure your hypothyroidism is not really very sophisticated medicine or not very intelligent medicine for that matter. 
Iodine deficiencies do occur, and iodine is very important for the adrenal glands, it's important for the breasts, it's important for the female reproductive system, it's important for the prostate, it's important for lots of things, important for the brain, but it's not like it's a miracle cure for hypothyroidism. And for that matter, neither is Synthroid or levothyroxine or Cytomel, whatever kind of drug you're on. What those drugs do is they are, replace the thyroid hormone that is supposedly deficient, but they don't fix the thyroid. This is why people don't get really good results from these kinds of drugs, because they don't fix the thyroid, because doctors don't recognize the triangle of disease, because doctors don't recognize that hypothyroidism follows excessive adrenal activity, messed up blood sugar, and a screwed up digestive system. And oh, by the way, not only is the thyroid regulated by the digestive system, not only is thyroid health dependent on digestive health, but the digestive health is dependent on the thyroid. So it's, you get a full circle. You get a messed up digestive system that causes the thyroid to be messed up. Then the, the messed up thyroid slows down the digestive system and that causes more thyroid problems. You get this vicious downward spiral. That's, this is how the triangle of disease tumbles out of control. Because once the, the digestive system breaks down, the, uh, you, you go into messed up blood sugar, then you go into a screwed up adrenal system, hyperadrenal activity, the thyroid slows down, that causes more digestive problems, more blood sugar problems, more adrenal problems, more thyroid problems, which causes more digestive problems, and you get this downward spiral of disease. So if Synthroid doesn't work, and if iodine doesn't work, what do you do? You address the triangle of disease. If you are dealing with A, any chronic long-term health challenge, which is itself dependent on hypothyroidism, or you simply are hypothyroid and you want to fix the thyroid, number one, work on the digestive system. Number two, work on the blood sugar system. Number three, work on the adrenal system. How do you do it? Well, we talk about it every day. You do a food diary, elimination diet, eliminate problem foods, caloric restriction, go liquids, use fiber, use probiotics, make sure you're using apple cider vinegar and your ultimate, uh, ultimate nightly essence and ultimate uh, enzymes, glutamine powder. There's a zillion ways you can work on your digestive health. Then you stabilize your blood sugar. A zillion ways to do that. Use more fiber, eat less sugar, use your chromium, vanadium, and selenium, and B-complex, caloric restriction more protein, glutamine powder, which is not only important for digestive health, it's also important for the blood sugar system, and then calm the body down. You can use nutrients for the adrenal glands, but calming the body down is so, so important. Oxygenation, deep breathing, exercise, meditation, relax, progressive relaxation techniques, visualization. All of these are incredibly important for overall health and also important for the health of the thyroid. You don't need a doctor for any of this. That's the message here, folks. You have to, the take home message of the, of the bright side, you have to sum it up. You don't need a doctor unless you have a surgical, uh, require some kind of surgical procedure because something hit you on the head or God forbid you had a heart attack or something broke inside your body. You don't need a doctor for any of this. This is about empowerment. The Bright Side message is about empowering humanity. It's about empowering human beings, freeing us from medical tyranny, from the medical model. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about shea butter. Give you some DIY, do-it-yourself ideas about what you can do with shea butter. I love the stuff. And then we'll move on to a couple other really neat uh, plant materials that are loaded with plant medicine, phytomedicine, phytonutrition really, as we continue talking polyphenols on the bright side. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Hang on. If you're on hold, we'll get to here momentarily. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or the longevity products or formulations or our Truth Skin Health products, if you've used our Truth Skin Health products and you want to chime in about how they've worked for you, we'd love to hear that. Love to hear about that. 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to Truth truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and if you want to purchase any of the longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. 
Okay, from the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, cannabinoids may soothe certain skin diseases. Say researchers, cannabinoids, the active ingredients in the marijuana plant, Cannabinoids contain anti-inflammatory properties, which could make them useful in the treatment of a wide range of skin diseases, according to researchers at the University of Colorado, Anschutz Medical Campus. Surprise, surprise, that's where I went to pharmacy school. At the University of Colorado, Anschutz Medical Campus, they're doing a lot of research on cannabinoids, not surprisingly, as uh, marijuana shops are all over the place here in Colorado. Cannabinoids are amazing, amazing, amazing medicine. I I'm not a believer in smoking pot, not that I've never done it, but uh, smoking anything is not good for you. However, if you're dealing with a health challenge, you should have every right to use cannabinoids, and it is just rude for a government to deprive people of medicine. Cannabinoids are powerful medicine. I've seen some amazing results with CBD. Uh, cannabidiol, which is one of the active cannabinoids uh, in the marijuana plant and in the hemp plant as well. I've seen amazing results for pain, for anxiety. If you go on the internet, there's a lot of literature about cancer and CBD, cannabinoids. I, I'm, I was skeptical, and then I started to see the results. So I started carrying it on my website, brightsidehealth.com, CBD oil. Interestingly, cannabinoids do the same thing for your skin that they do for your head. They calm things down. They make your skin stoned in a way. Cannabinoids, remember, are found inside the body. The body makes cannabinoids. The very same cannabinoids that are found in the marijuana plant are made in your brain and made in your nervous system where they have a calming effect. That's their job inside the body. They're, they call them endocannabinoids. They calm the body down. So it's not surprising that applying the cannabinoids topically would have a calming effect on the skin as well for inflammatory diseases, for, itch, for itching issues, for psoriasis, and for eczema. According to Dr. Robert Delavelle, MD, Associate Professor of Dermatology at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, in one study, 8 of 21 patients who applied a cannabinoid cream twice a day for three weeks completely eliminated severe itching or pruritus. Remember, these, this is not a steroid now. You don't have to worry about the withdrawal. This is just a, a plant active material. They call it a drug. It's not really a drug. It's a plant active material. Uh, De Laval believes that the primary driver in these cannabinoid treatments could be their anti inflammatory properties. Just like you have endocannabinoids in your brain, natural cannabinoids in your brain and in your nervous system, you got natural cannabinoids in your skin, and you also have natural cannabinoids in your digestive tract as well. Okay, from the Center for Research in Epidemiology and Population Health, artificial sweeteners are said to be light, but they leave a heavy burden on your health. I've been talking about this for years. Artificial sweeteners have got serious problems associated with them, including an increased risk for type 2 diabetes. That's because the sweet taste alone is enough to stimulate uh, sugar chemistry. It's not just sugar, it's the sweet taste alone. This is according to research that was published in France that showed that people always or almost always add sweeteners to their drinks or uh, patient, people who, who almost or almost always or always add sweeteners to their drinks had an 83% higher risk of developing diabetes than those who use them never or rarely. And that includes aspartame and sucralose. It's the sweet taste alone that activates sugar chemistry. And what we want to be doing is weaning ourselves off of the sweet taste. You guys probably experienced this where you stop eating sugar for two or three days, and then all of a sudden you have the same amount of sugar that you're used to using, and it tastes intensely sweet. We get Our body dumbs down or turns down the volume on the sweet taste, and what we want to be doing is resensitizing our taste buds so that a little bit of sweetness gives you your satisfaction. When you do sugar over and over and over again, or any kind of sweetener over and over and over again, your body turns down the volume on sweetness and you keep needing more. So the trick to, to leveraging sweet, and we all like sweet, and there are some reasons for that. I mean, it's evolutionarily mandated that we will go for sweet, so it's hard to just force yourself away, away from it. The trick is not to find different types of sweeteners but it's to wean yourself away from that sweet taste, to make, th make a small amount of sweetness taste intensely sweet so you don't need as much. 
All right, one more I want to read, and then we'll get to your calls here. This is, uh, I thought this was kind of interesting. We've been talking about resveratrol. This is from the journal Nutrients. Resveratrol shows bone health promise for child chemotherapy patients. Resveratrol is a potential candidate to help prevent bone-related complications in children during and after chemotherapy, a study carried out by Australian and Chinese academics claims. That's because resveratrol is a powerful, powerful, powerful antioxidant substance. Now remember, you're not gonna, you don't need to necessarily get your resveratrol from grape seeds. Go get yourself uh, some, uh, oh, I forgot the name of that tea. What, was it, what the heck is that tea that was called that has high doses of resveratrol? Uh, the uh, Japanese knotwood tea. And you can get that on the internet. Japanese knotwood tea. Now if something's gonna be working for, uh, for uh, improving bone health complications in children after chemotherapy, it very likely is going to help folks who are dealing with osteoporosis or any other connective tissue challenges. One of the neat things about these polyphenols that we've been talking about is they strengthen bone. They strengthen connective tissue. They strengthen the connective tissue in the teeth. We talked about that a couple of days ago. So resveratrol has got multiple health benefits, and you can add to those health benefits, potentially anyway, strengthening bone or improving bone health, according to this study, for uh, child, child chemotherapy patients, but it may very well work for other folks too. All right, one more here. From the European Journal of Epidemiology, speaking of bone health, magnesium may prevent, uh, promote bone health and prevent fractures, high levels of magnesium in the body might decrease the risk of bone fractures according to results of a study from the University of Bristol and Eastern Finland. Excuse me, cal uh, we all know about calcium for bones, but we don't often hear about the importance of magnesium for building bones. Magnesium and calcium work together. The more calcium you're taking, and we all get a lot of calcium if we're doing dairy, uh, the more magnesium you need. Magnesium, unlike calcium, is one of the more common mineral deficiencies. Calcium deficiency is not all that common, although functional deficiency is because you need to have stomach acid and you need to have a functioning pancreas and gallbladder and, and uh, liver in order to absorb calcium and magnesium, for that matter, from your foods. But most of us get plenty of calcium. What we don't get plenty of is magnesium. That's because magnesium is found largely in green leafy vegetables, and most of us don't eat our green leafy vegetables, which is why you want to be using your Osteomag and your OsteoFX, both of which are good sources of magnesium. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return with your phone calls right after this on the Bright Side. Don't go away. Back on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Wesley in Idaho. Good morning, Wes. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for calling. Pretty good. Thank you, Ben. Um, uh you're talking about shea butter, which is vegetable. What about butter oil of Western Price? And oh, man, ghee. butter is... You're talking about butter, like food butter, butter from a cow, butter, dairy butter. Man, that stuff's awesome. And by the way, Weston Price is very, very underappreciated. He was, he was basically the first guy to go out and say that there was a relationship between nutritional deficiencies and chronic degenerative diseases. For people who don't know, Weston Price was a dentist, and he wrote a classic book on, uh, on nutritional deficiencies. And I forgot what the name of the book was, but he was, he was very interested in why people had lousy teeth. You know, you ever see those movies? You ever watch movies like that take place in the Middle Ages or take place in the Victorian period or in the, you know, old westerns? You look at the people's teeth and they have normal teeth, you know, in the movies. But back in the day, they did not have normal teeth. They had awful teeth because the teeth are extremely responsive to nutritional deficiencies and, and we didn't, and also, of course, to bacterial, bacterial issues. And we didn't know until the late 19th century about the relationship of bacteria to disease. And we didn't know about nutrition until really the early 20th century and its relationship to disease. So Weston Price was a dentist, and he was just, he thought to himself, people should not have lousy teeth. You, nature, did not, uh, nature did not make teeth or any part of the body to be unhealthy, but people had these crooked 
crooked teeth and teeth were falling out of their heads and gum disease. And so he decided to take it upon himself to travel around the world and check out people's teeth, people's teeth in indigenous countries and in, uh, among indigenous populations. And he went to New Guinea and he went to uh, Africa and he went to uh, na uh, uh, countries and he checked out uh, third world countries. I guess they didn't call them third world countries, but uh, uh, under, underdeveloped countries. And he checked out the indigenous people and he noticed they all had great teeth. And he noticed that they were all eating indigenous foods, including bone broth and bones and protein. They weren't eating processed foods. They weren't eating a lot of sugar. And so he wrote a book called Nutritional Deficiencies uh, and Degenerative Disease. I, for, I actually forgot the name of the book, but it's a classic book that came out in the 1920s or 30s. It's got great pictures in it. And it's all about the connection between uh, indigenous populations and how uh, and uh, their lack of diabetes and their lack of cancer and their lack of heart disease and their increased longevity and their increased vitality. And he associated it with their, with their indigenous types of foods, the kind of foods that they ate. Uh, since then, he wrote his book, I think, in the 1930s or so, sometime in the early part of the 20th century. Since then, there's been a, uh, there's a uh, organization called the Weston Price Foundation. And these guys are proponents of, uh, of all of the things that Weston Price advised for staying healthy, especially things like bone broth and fermented foods and eating lots of good quality dairy. Among, uh, among uh, the dairy foods that, they that they're proponents of is butter. And for good reason, because butter is incredible, incredible stuff and very underappreciated. It's like a nutritional supplement butter with all the different nutritional compounds in it, particularly fatty substances, particularly hard to find fatty substances like vitamin K and another, another uh, uh, active material that they call Factor X. Now, nobody really knows what Factor X is, except they know it's good for you. Factor X is a building substance. It's thought to be part, uh, at least partially, uh, uh, partially uh, made up of vitamin K. But I consider a Factor X to be something called the what I call the cholesterol complex. The cholesterol complex is made up of cholesterol and other substances, which we call phospholipids, like uh, lecithin, which is the classic type of phospholipid, as well as vitamin K. Uh, all of these combine to form this stuff called Factor X, which is very, very important for growth, for repair, and for healing. And butter is nature's finest source of Factor X. Oh, but there's more. Butter is also a great source of selenium, which is another very, very important mineral. And it's also a good source, as we were talking earlier about iodine. Butter is also a source of iodine. And most importantly, in my opinion anyway, butter is also a source of something called butyric acid, which is a short chain fatty acid that nourishes the colon. It actually energizes cells of the colon. It can be very important for, dealing, for folks dealing with ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel syndrome or, uh, or uh, 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 Crohn's disease or, God forbid, colon cancer. So if anything that has to do with the colon, butyric acid is going to be helpful. Butter is nature's richest source of butyric acid. You can make your own butyric, or probiotics in your gut can make butyric acid by chewing down on fiber. We talked about that a couple of days ago. Butyric acid, like the other short-chain fatty acids, has appetite suppressant effects. So butter is a great appetite suppressant. A butyric acid also has mood enhancing effects. So butter is also a great mood enhancer. Cancer, and the short chain fatty acids are also important for cardiovascular health. So surprise, surprise, eating butter can also be very helpful for cardiovascular health. So if you're staying away from butter because you were told that it's got cholesterol in it or that it's fatty and that it's not good for your heart, bad advice. And hopefully nobody here, nobody listening to this program, believes any of the nonsense about butter substitutes. And I don't think anybody ever eats margarine anymore. I don't think I think margarine has gone into the uh, ash bin of history, although I, just, I still do see margarine in the grocery store. But now they have these butter substitutes. Don't do it. <laughs> butter substitutes are chemically processed foods, and chemically processed foods are never going to be good for you, no matter how little cholesterol they have in them. And of course, I know nobody listening to this program buys any of that nonsense about, keeping, about not eating cholesterol. Does that help you there, uh, Wesley? Uh, uh, jump in that 110 mile an hour fast lane. Uh, nutrition and physical degeneration, 500 page book. Now my question 
Nutrition. Now, tell me again, what's it called again? It's called nutritional disease, uh, nutritional, nutritional deficiencies and physical. Nutrition and physical degeneration. That's right. That's 525 right. page book. And it's got great pictures in it. Bucks, $25 on Amazon. My question, Ben, can I get it out? Uh, butter oil by Western Price and. So say and, that again. Say that slowly, Wes. I didn't understand that. Okay. Nutrition and physical degeneration. No, no, I heard that. But what was the last thing you just said? What was the last thing you said? I didn't, I didn't catch that. Uh, uh, butter, oil. Uh, 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 I wanted to know about ghee. Oh, yeah. Clarified butter and unpasteurized butter. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Unpasteurized butter. Unpasteurized yeah. is always going to be the way to go. Pasteurization kills bacteria, but it also kills enzymes, and it also has a negative effect on vitamins and nutritional value in general. So unpasteurized is always going to be better, but ghee is the best. Yeah. Ghee. Ha have you tasted ghee? Oh, uh, my God. A little bit of it. I found out where I can get it at a reasonable price. I bought it through the Internet. And very expensive. Yeah, uh, it's expensive, but it is well, so... I found it locally at a health food store. I'm going to go in next week, and it's like $15 a yeah. pound, which is reasonable. It's yeah. about the same price as unpasteurized butter, which, again, boy, it's even harder, harder to find unpasteurized butter. Uh, the biggest, uh, the best place is a... Uh, uh, Coeur d'Alene, 50,000 people, and that one store doesn't always have the unpasteurized butter or cream either. You know, they get it from one dairy, and, you know, it depends partly the time of year and whatever. You know, a lot of times I go in there, they don't have pure cream, and they don't have unpasteurized butter. But ghee, they're going to always have ghee. Ghee comes in what? A jar. Comes in a it, jar. I leave my I leave my ghee. Long time, man. I, I last a, Yeah, I leave my ghee. I leave my ghee out. I leave my ghee out on the counter. I don't even refrigerate it, and I just no. dig into it, and it is so tasty. You'll. It, I, I sometimes it, eat it out of the spoon. Like I'll do a little the, teaspoon of the ghee, just right the out of the ghee, spoon. The ghee has got to be the best. One of the best things to cook. What? Yeah, has yeah. what? It has a melting or smoke point at, I don't know, 500 degrees, something like that? Yeah, it has a very high smoke point, and it's also great for your turmeric tea, uh, or any kind of tea, really. But if you're going to make turmeric tea, throw a little ghee in there. Or uh, if you're going to make turmeric milk, throw a little ghee in there as well. It has a nice salty flavor to it. It is just super-duper delicious. It's clarified butter. It's got all the particulates taken out of it. And, yes, it is pricey, but I, in my opinion, it's worth it. All right, Wes, thank you for what? contributing. Thanks for call. Appreciate it. Going to let you go here. And that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com and also the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.